Hello and good evening. Welcome to Stutter Pot TV. I'm your host, NJW, and I'm back with another crime news episode for you today. A woman is wanted by police for fatally stabbing a roommate at a restaurant early this month during a dispute over missing money. At around 4.20pm on the 8th of July, authorities responded to Keith and Son Soul Food Cafe at 5948 Martha Luther King Jr. Highway in St. Pleasant, Maryland, on a reported stabbing. When officers arrived, they discovered 62-year-old Mervyn Daniel unresponsive inside the restaurant bathroom, suffering from a... God, dog, that must have been her last 10, and she needed something to smoke. A stab wound. The victim was taken to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. Oh, she Authorities said that 21-year-old Rakea Poston and 37-year-old Jesse Kelly, who both live with Mervyn, got into an argument with him at the restaurant where he worked part-time. Mervyn's co-workers then separated them. Rakea and Jesse left and went to the AutoZone store across the road, but returned minutes later. Rakea then confronted Mervyn in the kitchen area over $10 that she said was missing and yelled, I will kill everyone in this store. <laughs> Investigators said that Rakia then grabbed a bread knife. <laughs> that ain't funny. She said she was going to kill everybody about that hot tin. You understand me? Y'all leave her money alone next time. You won't do that no more. And stabbed Mervyn, who stumbled into the bathroom floor before collapsing. Jesse helped Rakia escape through the back door of the restaurant. Police found a bloody knife hidden on the shelf in the kitchen. Mervyn's friend Skip Fletcher said that he worked hard every day. Came on the weekend to help his family run the restaurant, he said. Police have arrested Jesse and charged him with accessory after the fact. Authorities are still searching for Rakia, who's wanted for first-degree murder and related charges. The investigation into the matter continues. So, not other did she kill him, somebody helped her escape, which he was charged, and then she's still on the run for the actual murder. She must be a soul sister. Thirty-one-year-old Eugene McKeithen is behind bars for fatally shooting his girlfriend, thirty-four-year-old Veronica Smart. He looked like he meant to do it. He just sitting there like, "Hurry, I'm take this picture so I can go back to sleep. I done been through this before." At 1:08 a.m. on Thursday, the 20th of July, authorities responded to the intersection of Marseille and Minerva Streets in Detroit, Michigan, on reports of shots fired. When officers arrived at the scene, they found Veronica laying face down and unresponsive in the middle of the street with a gunshot wound to her head. Medics arrived and pronounced her dead at the scene. Investigators said that while driving near that intersection, Eugene pulled a handgun and shot his girlfriend Veronica, fatally wounding her. Eugene then pulled her body from the vehicle, leaving her in the roadway before fleeing the scene. Eugene was arrested later that day. His shot so he killed her, shot her in the head, and then drug her out the car to leave her in the middle of the street so that everybody could see what not to do. Charged with first degree murder, felony in possession of a firearm, and two felony firearm violations. He's held at the Wayne County Jail without bond. The motive of the attack is unclear as the investigation into the matter continues. Two men are behind bars in connection to the death of a man. At just before 10.30 a.m. on Friday, the 21st of July, a third... One look high, and one look like he coming off down off of high. These fellas act like they, they meant to do it too. They don't know, meant to do it list. I'm gonna make one of those. I meant to do it. He's responded to the 400 block of South Drury Street in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and found a body in the wooded area. Investigators later identified the victim as 28-year-old Dylan Lewis. Officials have not disclosed the victim's cause of death. Police initially identified 28-year-old Troy Driscoll as a suspect in the case. Later that evening, at around 8.20pm, investigators executed a search warrant at just over two miles away near 100 West Matthews Avenue, located Troy and took him into custody. He was booked into the Payne County Jail on charges of first-degree murder, third-degree burglary, and possession of drug paraphernalia. After conducting interviews with witnesses, police identified a second suspect. Oh, I knew it had something to do with drugs. The first one looked at high, and he coming down off his. 31-year-old John Helfrick. At just after 2.30am on the 22nd of July, John was arrested on a charge of first-degree murder, and is held at the Payne County Jail. The three men lived in Stillwater. However, police have not stated how the men knew each other, 
The events leading up to Dylan's death were a motive in the attack. The investigation into the matter continues. A 33-year-old man is behind bars for assaulting a 59-year-old woman and breaking a nut. So you didn't beat the woman up for not saying good morning? God damn, what if she didn't say good night? Well, what the consequences would have been? because she did not say good morning to him as he walked by. At around 9am on Thursday the 13th of July, authorities responded to Belsom Street in the Dorchester neighbourhood of Boston, Massachusetts on a report of a woman attacked by a stranger. When officers arrived, they found a beaten woman who told them that while she was watering her front yard, a man later identified as Ian Atkinson walked by her and then cursed her for not saying good morning to him. Suddenly fearful because of the aggressive nature of Ian's remark, the woman well, some people do get upset when you don't say good morning when you're in a work environment. So, but he just don't, he don't even know this lady and just said, you ain't gonna speak? God damn, they didn't beat her for it? I done heard some crazy stuff of people getting fought on for, yeah, I said fought on. Woman started video recording Ian on her cell phone. Ian, who entered a black Mercedes park nearby, then left the car and advanced on the woman and began punching her. Home security surveillance video obtained by police shows Ian punch the victim at least seven times in the head. The video then shows Ian return to the Mercedes, put it in reverse and swerve towards the woman before driving away. The woman, who was bleeding profusely from her nose, managed to record the car's license plate and provided it to police. She told investigators that she'd noticed Ian wearing a GPS tracking device. The woman was transported to County Hospital, where it was determined that she suffered a fractured nose and hemorrhaging to her left eye. She told police she managed to bite Ian on the shoulder during the attack. Police ran the license plate number to locate Ian at a home in Lucerne. So she said she bit his ass. Trying to hit on her for nothing. Always leave a mark, ladies. If somebody's doing something to you, leave a mark. See, I didn't caught his ass, don't you? Good morning. ...street and found a second Mercedes registered in his name. Officers compared Ian's license photo to the man captured by the victim's phone video and determined them to be the same person. The victim later identified Ian as her attacker in a photo lineup. Police also determined that Ian was wearing a GPS tracker under conditions of a separate assault case. Information from the tracker place. So he got on the anchor monitor now, assaulting somebody else from another assault. Placed Ian directly at the Balsam Street location at the time of the assault. Ian was taken into custody. Ian argued that he was defending himself because the woman was biting him. He said that the woman was the aggressor and sprayed him with a garden hose. But the video showed none of that, and there was no water on the ground. There's something more to that than what they're telling us about this case, but we're going to move on. Ian was arrested and charged with assault and battery causing serious bodily injury, and assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. At a court hearing on Tuesday the 25th of July, a judge found Ian to be dangerous and ordered him to remain behind bars for 120 days. He's due back in court in September. The investigation into the matter continues. Well, there you have it. Another episode of Stutterpot TV, crime news of the day. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. Subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and thank you for joining me again. Thank you.